last minute shakeup at 5.30 a.m., laundry situation not good. And when your focus is on helping your clients, it's easy to forget about yourself. But NASM knows trainers. Morning, Ryan. It's okay. And staying in front of the day isn't always nice as drive. simple as one, two, three. So when the unexpected has you pressing pause. What's the latest on creatine? I'm going to get back to you on that. Let NASM1 help you press play. Visit nasm.org to sign up for a membership today. You're listening to the NASM CPT Podcast with Rick Ritchie, winner of the Share Care Emmy Award for Social Storytelling and the official podcast of the National Academy of Sports Medicine. Hey, y'all, and welcome to the NASM CPT Podcast. My name is Rick Ritchie, and today I'm going to start with a, a little riddle for you. What do the following things have in common? Delta Airlines, the Mississippi Delta, 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 can I help you, help you, help you? And the deltoid muscle. What do they all have in common? Well, clearly we've got some Greek letters going on here. So the first one, Delta Airlines, and their logo is a triangle. The Mississippi Delta, as the Mississippi River gets closer to the Gulf, we start to see that the, the land gets softer. And as it gets softer, the river doesn't flow straight in, it expands and starts to make a triangle. Hence, the triangle, a delta. Delta, delta, delta is the Greek letter, and that is an SNL spoof from back in my day. Oh, so long ago, you won't remember. Um, and then the deltoid muscle. All of them based on the Greek letter delta, and the deltoid, in fact, is named after the Greek letter Delta, the triangle, because it is a triangle-shaped muscle that's on the arm. So we're going to look at the proximal attachments here. So I've got what we refer to as an anterior head, a middle head, and a posterior head. So the anterior head, it actually originates on the lateral third of the clavicle. Remember, the clavicle right here, uh, this is this little bone right here, the lateral third of it. So my shoulder muscle, the deltoid muscle attaches there and then it runs down and attaches to the humerus. Well, then my lateral deltoid, the lateral deltoid, if you go to your shoulder, you'll find a bony shelf right in the middle of where the deltoid is, a bony shelf. And that bony shelf is part of the uh, scapula and it is called the acromion process. And the acromion process is the process where the lateral deltoid runs straight down from the acromion to the lateral part of the humerus. And then finally, the posterior deltoid runs along the spine of the scapula. Now, these are the proximal attachments, or what sometimes referred to as the origin, and then it goes into the insertion. I refer to them proximal attachments and then distal attachment. Now, the distal attachment, all three of those heads converge as they go from the anterior, posterior, and they meet in the middle and create a triangle. So all three heads attach to the deltoid tuberosity. It's about halfway down the humerus. So if you follow it down, about halfway down the humerus, it's going to attach there. Now, in order for us to truly understand what's going on in the deltoid, let's do a quick review of muscles. These are rules that muscles got to follow. And the rules of muscles are, remember, here we go. Muscles only pull, they cannot push. Muscles only contract or relax. And that has to do with the all or none principle. Muscles have two attachments. Uh, and they must have at least two attachments and cross at least one joint. Now, these two points are, uh, again, known as origin insertion, or as I would like to refer to them as more proximal and distal attachments. Now, muscles only directly move the joints that they cross. They can indirectly move other joints, but they only specifically and directly move joints that they cross. Muscles work best in the direction of their fibers. And if you look at the deltoid, the deltoid's got a lot of different angles with the fibers and it crosses the shoulder joint, which is a highly mobile joint. 
And so with some of the fibers being on the front of the joint, some being on the back, some being on the side, there's a lot actually going on here that this muscle can move the shoulder joint in many different ways. And then there's a soft rule, which is insertions move towards the origin. So it's not always the case, but as a general rule, that tends to be how it looks or the distal attachment moves towards a proximal attachment. So uh, we're going to get into what are the actions of the deltoid. But before we do, this episode of the NASM CPT podcast is brought to you by NASM One, the membership for trainers and coaches. Members enjoy unlimited access to hundreds of career resources. Get the Edge app to schedule and program clients. Enjoy half off all certifications and specializations. Access to free CEUs and more. All of this for just $35 a month. Go to nasm.org slash membership to learn more about NASM1. All right, let's get into the actions, the joint actions of the deltoid muscles. And we'll talk about the joint actions and then we'll discuss what those exercises actually look like. All right, so here we go. I'm going to look at the anterior deltoid. So the anterior deltoid will go kind of uh, plane by plane. So right here, we've got sagittal plane. So in the sagittal plane, the anterior delt, the one on the front can do, well, let's look at the exercise, right? So I know that they can do front raises if I raise my arm straight in front of me. So if I'm doing a, a uh, shoulder front raise, then that's going to be my anterior deltoid that's doing the work. So what is that joint action? First of all, what plane is it? Well, it's a sagittal plane movement as I raise my arm up and lower it down in front of me. Sagittal plane movement so sagittal plane, generally, we're only looking at flexion and extension. So what does it do concentrically? Concentrically, it does shoulder flexion as it raises my arm up in front of me. It decelerates shoulder extension. So in the sagittal plane, my anterior delt will do shoulder flexion, front raises. What else can I do? Well, they also work when I'm doing a bench press or a dumbbell chest press. So what plane of motion is that? Well, usually we think of that as the transverse or horizontal plane. So if it's a transverse or horizontal plane, it is also assisting. It is doing horizontal adduction, horizontal adduction, like it does in a bench press, like it does in a dumbbell chest press. Also in the horizontal plane, it can do medial rotation or internal rotation. So medial or internal rotation. And think of like arm wrestling. So I'm doing an internal rotation. My anterior deltoid is helping me with that. But here's the other thing. And this is one that we generally only think about for the middle deltoid. But I want you to think about how the shoulder is moving and why it's so important. If I go into a shoulder press, not a lateral raise, a shoulder press, I bring my arms here. And from a lateral view, for those of you who are watching on YouTube, I'm turning my body this way, uh, sideways to the camera, and I raise my arm. Now, as I do that, and I move like I'm going to do a shoulder press, the anterior delt moves to the top of my shoulder. So as I press overhead, it is the anterior deltoid that will be a significant frontal plane abductor, significant frontal plane abductor as it moves my shoulder, my arm at my shoulder joint away from my body, abducting from my body. So I always say even abduction as I, as I coach this and talk to, to anatomy students about it, when the, the aliens come to take you away, what are they doing? They are abducting you. So you're raising your arms in abduction as they take you away. I'm being abducted by aliens. My shoulders, my arms are moving away from my body as I raise my arms over my head. And then it's always a cornfield. The aliens pick you up from, and then they put you back down in a cornfield. And then you go and tell everybody about it, that you're abducted by aliens and the things they did to you. And at that point, everybody around you is like, just stay with the aliens, bro. Go back. Go back. So 
let's get back to anatomy here. So functional anatomy of my shoulder, I know that my anterior deltoid can also do frontal plane abduction. Now, let's get to the lateral head of the deltoid because the anterior head had a lot going on there. My lateral head, it's pretty much just abduction. So think about lateral raises as I bring my arms this way into a lateral raise, dumbbell lateral raise. Now my anterior delt can help with that as well, but it's basically one of the only movements that the lateral head of my deltoid can do. Uh, and so the that that head right there in the middle, and some people call it the lateral head, some people call it the medial deltoid. And I gotta be honest, I don't really know which one I like. I kind of like the, the medial deltoid because it's the one in the middle. When you talk about the lateral head, it is, I guess, more lateral than the other two based on its, uh, its proximal attachment. But it is the one in the middle. So somebody can call it medial, somebody can call it lateral, and I'll tend to know that either of those are which one you're talking about. I'll know which one it is. So um, it, it's written different ways that we see in there, but it's that deltoid in the middle. It runs lateral side of the body and it can do what kind of raises? Lateral raises in what plane? The frontal plane. So it moves in the frontal plane by moving my arms to my sides. Rick, yeah, I'm always confused frontal plane, but my arms are moving to the side. That's right. Yeah, so think about... Uh, you're standing in glass and you want to see which way my arms can move from the front. Well, if you're looking at me from the front, you can see my arms move sideways. That's frontal plane. I want to see how your arms are moving when I look at you from the front. So I can move them sideways and you can see their full movement that way. If you want to see my arm and which way it moves uh, from the side, I can lift it in front of me or move it behind me. So uh, it's all about the direction of view and what plane of motion has to do with where you're looking from. All right, so now let's get into the next one, the posterior head of the deltoids. It's got a lot going on as well. So I've got sagittal plane extension. Think about a sagittal plane lat pull down. My, my posterior deltoids assist in that. They also have a big component with horizontal abduction. So in the transverse or horizontal plane, I'm pulling my arms back. It's like a rear delt fly. Think about a rear delt fly. And I got to say, a lot of times in bodybuilding, they don't get things right necessarily. They'll give an exercise. I'm like, well, that's not really what that does. But rear delt fly, they hit a home run with that one. That is definitely what it does. It it does not engage the lats really very well at the shoulder joint. Really at the shoulder joint, the posterior deltoid is doing almost everything. If we stick in strict horizontal plane, doing abduction, <clears throat> that's at my shoulder joint, that's gonna be my rear delt doing that. Now, you might say, well, your shoulder blades are moving. I'm like, yes, but that's not the glenohumeral joint that I'm talking about. That's a scapular retraction. I'm talking about horizontal abduction. The lateral, uh, the posterior deltoids kind of own that movement. And then they also do lateral rotation. They help with external rotation. And all of these muscles, all of them, when you look at them together, they have a job to do. And they also help to stabilize the shoulder joint, which is good because it is a highly mobile joint, which compared to other joints is highly unstable. So it's nice to have some muscles around helping to stabilize that joint, that shoulder joint. So we have a lot of joint actions that happen with just one muscle. But remember, that muscle runs on the anterior side. So it's got anterior movement, sagittal, frontal, and transverse plane movements. On the lateral side, moves me out to the side. It is just frontal plane abduction. It on the, runs on the posterior side. And in the posterior side, it's got sagittal and transverse plane movements as well. All right, y'all. Thanks for listening. Like, subscribe, share with your fitness friends and family, and leave a review. 
Uh, leaving a review is pretty helpful for us in helping other people find it. And then also let me know what you like, what you don't like, and what we can do to make the show better. If you want to reach out to me directly, hit me up. You can do so on Instagram at dr.rickritchie or email me rick.ritchie at nasm.org. Shout out to my producer, Eric Sorensen. Y'all keep inspiring people to fitness. Thanks for listening. This has been the NASM CPT Podcast.